I was born and raised in Santa Cruz. One of the things I love most about this town is how environmentally conscious everybody in it is. It was because of that that I thought I was completely aware of how our environment was changing. But the truth is that I was living in a bubble. That's me. My bubble burst when I made a Facebook account. I would scroll through my feed and read articles about how pigs were abused in food production, or new genetically modified plants made to end starvation, but instead disrupting migration patterns and ecosystems. I even read articles about how our pollution, both sound and chemical, disrupts the survival and communication of marine mammals. It was these articles that made me feel helpless, frustrated, and scared. I frantically started researching pollution, freshwater depletion, and factory farming. It seems like every industry was altering the environment in some way to provide food or energy for us, people. How could we as a society allow all of these things to happen? More importantly, why did I feel so paralyzed as I watched our planet decay? It occurred to me that all these problems were connected by one cause, overpopulation. That's why I founded my own organization called Preventing Overpopulation, POP, to educate the public about overpopulation, its causes, its effects, and eventually end starvation, stop pollution, and conserve fresh water. At our current rate, in just 43 years, we will possibly reach Earth's carrying capacity of 10 billion people. But what is overpopulation? What is too many people? Why is that such a scary number? Today, our global population is 7.5 billion, and the numbers are multiplying fast. If we do reach that number of 10 billion, we will reach it by the year 2060. But why is overpopulation an issue? Why are we supposed to be scared of that number? Did you know that today, one of our primary sources of fresh water is already rapidly running out? And global superpowers, such as the US, China, and India, aquifers, underground sources of fresh water, are being depleted. They're not renewable. And at the rate that we're drawing from them, they're not sustainable either. As we pump water out of these aquifers, the foundations of our world are compromised. As the aquifers dry out, the lower water pressure in the sand and gravel causes slow drainage of water from the surrounding clay and silt bed. This makes them unstable and dry. As a result, over time, the ground subsides from a loss of sport. Have any of you ever pulled an apple from the bottom of the pile at the grocery store? Yeah, me too. <laughs> the whole thing collapsed, right? Because the foundation failed. The California Central Valley has already sunk 28 feet due to this exact phenomena. But what is scariest about this is that these aquifers are some of the last remaining sources of fresh water. Once our lakes, rivers, and aquifers dry out, the only fresh water we'll have left will be frozen in the glaciers. And the glaciers are already melting turning our fresh water into salt water. Not surprisingly, war is already breaking out in developing countries over drinkable water. And if we don't act now, we could all face the same fate. If we continue at our current rate of growth, in 43 years, when we do reach Earth's carrying capacity of 10 billion people, we will have more poverty, disease, lower life expectancy, an unforgiving climate with more typhoons, hurricanes, even land loss from rising sea levels. Demand for fresh water will increase by 55%. And our food production would have to double to support the ballooning population. But this is all in the future. We have tons of time to turn things around. Well, not tons, but enough. Assuming we all act now. Last month, 
um, we had an ant problem at my house. This is going to sound strange, but I felt somewhat in awe of their teamwork. In fact, spire ants are experts at teamwork. They're pretty tiny, right? But when faced with large challenges, like crossing a river, hundreds or thousands of fire ants can work together to build structures out of their own bodies, like rafts. As a result, they can carry the entire colony across the river. Collectively, they do what is necessary to save the entire group. We too can work together to solve the problems that we face today. We don't have time to wait for a few geniuses or even the most powerful people to fix the mess that we're in. That's why we need a solution that all seven and a half billion people on Earth can take part in. After much research, I found a way that we could decrease our global population by 1.6 billion people in the next decade. Consider this. If each family had two children or less and our death rate remained the same, by the year 2027, we would have a global population of 5.9 billion people. We would consume fresh water at a significantly slower pace and we would be able to alleviate pollution. Not only that, raising kids today in the US is kind of expensive. <laughs> raising one child to the age of 18 and paying for his or her undergraduate and graduate school costs on average $410,000. If they have an educational disability, like say an IQ below 70, that cost can soar up to two million. But, there's one more family fee to consider. How many of you have parents or grandparents that you expect to take care of? Okay. <laughs> yeah, me too. If you combine the cost of raising two children with caring for two elders, your financial responsibility would become around four million. This includes four years of assisted living and three years in a nursing home. What if they live longer? I can't even afford my own car. I can't afford my own gas. This is a huge responsibility. As I learn more about what will happen to our world and what overpopulation will cause, I'm not sure I want to have kids. In fact, I'm pretty sure I don't want any. But all of us combined can completely change the future of our planet. Having smaller families could take tons of pressure off our environment. We need to stop overpopulation. But the best way to do this is by empowering the world through knowledge. Spreading the knowledge of the environmental and financial aspects of family planning. We need to educate the childbearing world about overpopulation. In developing countries, such as Niger or Burundi, the birth rate remains at over six children per woman. But we're a part of this problem too. In Tennessee, Utah, and Texas, families are having up to six kids. There are millions of children in the world today that don't have families. For those of you that want one or two kids, adoption is always an option. In fact, 140 million children worldwide are orphans. Now, I, have, I don't have the experience of having a family. I've never had kids. As you can probably tell, I'm a teenager. <laughs> but I think that if at some point I change my mind and I decide to have a family, that I want to adopt. But I'm sure some of you already have families. Like, raise your hand if you already have kids. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you may think that there's nothing you can do to help, but just by spreading awareness to your friends and family about overpopulation, you, you could significantly help solve this problem. You could also pledge. If you go to www.popoverpop.com, you could pledge to have two kids or less, whether you already have them or you're just thinking of having a family. Somebody I've always admired once said that one of the things humans fear most is that we will be powerful beyond our belief. When we work together, this is definitely possible. We may all be of singular value, but together we have exponential effects. And as humans, we have the choice to make it a positive one. Thank you.